Hi there! Do you want to learn Power Automate and simplify your workflows? In this video, I will share one of the lessons from my Power Automate module on my Udemy course. If you want to access the course, check the pinned comment below or become a channel member to unlock all the lessons. Let's get started! Now that we are getting the items, we need to concatenate each email from the approvers in a single text, as I just showed in the previous lesson. Since we have two approvers, we want to put it like this. And the output of the get items is an array of rows. So we need to go row by row, concatenating them together. And the way to do that is using a variable. A variable is something that we can write to it. So we can go recursively to each item and just append the next email after the current variable. Keep adding to the end of the variable. Let's try this approach to understand a few aspects of Power Automate. So, right before the get items or after, it doesn't matter, but I always like to put the variables that's something I'm going to reuse through the flow in the first steps. So, I'm going to add here and search for variable. And here we have initialize variable. Then I can give a name. Let's call var emails. The type, that's in this case, I'm going to set as a string because it's a text. And the initial value is blank. This will create the variable. We can rename the actions just clicking here in the top and, for example, adding something else. I always like to keep the original name so I know what the action is and then add something to the end to identify it. In this case, I'm going to call initialize variable dash var emails. Now, I need to write to this variable for each row in the items lists. After the get items, let's search again for variable and select set variable. This will be used to write a value to the variable. Let's click. Now we have set variable. We can select the variable that we are going to write to. And then what's the value that we are going to write to the variable? Here, let's just start by selecting the email from the get items. See, the get items give us all the columns that the SharePoint list has. Even though we are just using the email column, it has several other columns that are already there by default. But in this one, I want to write email. Notice that once I click in the email, something is going to happen. It created a for each loop. This is a loop that will run through all the items in that list of emails because we used the get items connector. Even if we had just one row in the SharePoint list, it's going to create this because the get items returns an array of data. And Power Automate doesn't know how many rows are in there. So it will always create something like this. Let's just remember how the output of the get is. We have the value object and we have an array with the rows from SharePoint, first row and second row. So each time it's going to go over the rows and call this action here, that's the set variable. In the first run, we are going to have the first email in here. In the second run, we are going to have the second email here, and so on. If we run right now, we can see what's going to happen. No, it's not the final answer yet, but let's run to understand how it works. So let's click on tests automatically and select the last run so we use the same trigger. It just showed these warnings, but don't worry should be running. So it initialized the variable that's empty because we didn't pass anything yet in here. Got the two items. And then as you can see, the for each is running two times, one and two. And then it will terminate the flow. In the first run, we can expand the set variable and see that we passed my email in there. In the first run, the variable has this value. In the second run, the variable has Clark's email. And after this loop ends, 
what will be here will be the last executions. We will only have Clark's email in the variable because first it will set my email to the variable and secondly is going to set Clark's email. A way to visualize this is after the for each, putting the variable in a compose action just to see what's the result. We can test that just to see it. So let's do that. This is how I like to build my flows. I keep adding actions to it and keep improving it and testing it. So after the for each, let's add a compose action just for debugging purposes. And here in the inputs, now we can put the variable called var emails and we are going to see what's stored in the variable. Before we run, I just wanted to explain one thing that we could have be, we could do here. Let's, for example, post the message here inside the for each and just add the email in here. So it will send one message for each email, but those are going to be separate messages. But I just want to send once, one time. For example, if we want to send an email to several people, we are not going to send one email at a time 10 times. We just send one email with the 10 recipients. And that's what we want to do. That's why we are leaving it to the end and writing all the emails in a single variable. That's our goal. But right now, since on each for each we are, we are just writing the email, we are overriding what's in there and the last email that runs here is the one that's going to be in the variable. We still need to improve this, but let's test and see what's the current result. Again, using the same old action, so we don't need to re-add SharePoint lists. Here it shows some warning, but it's not a problem. Where is our, where is our run? Maybe let me go to the flow homepage and here it is. It didn't show in there. Sometimes this is happening. But we can see that it ran 15 seconds ago and the test was cancelled because of the terminates that we added in there. Let's click here and see the run. So again, it got the items, applied the for each two times, setting the variable that at the moment is overwriting its content. And in the end, we added the variable to the compose. Let's see what's in here. So we just have Clark's email because in the second run, it wrote Clark's email to the variable and then it lost my email. So what I need to do is every time write after the existing content of the variable. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member or purchasing the course, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.